Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, my pleasure to introduce to you the one, the only, Terry Kaiser, please. Thank you, it's nice being here. Uh, hi everybody, I'd like to uh, first just recognize our lovely people in the front row here. <laughs> <laughs> Could you stand up, please? <laughs> Turn around to the audience. I don't think she can stand up unless she plays the music. Every, every detail from Bernie to Andrew McCarthy, thank you guys. I mean, doesn't that feel great to have people portray and imitate your character on screen? It's amazing. Uh, I, I was, uh, they've come over to the booth, obviously, and I was very honored. Uh, the detail that they put in on this thing, and it's, uh, I think, humbling as a performer, as an actor, to uh, leave such an impression on somebody. Uh, you know, we just try to do our job and, <laughs> as an actor, and all of a sudden they come up, and uh, uh, it, was, it was very humbling, and I thank you for the detail. I, I, I saw your face when another fan came and gave you this and wanted you to sign it. You know, or, or this is just printer's ink. It's just printer's ink. Could you, uh, could you sign this for us? <laughs> <Hey>, <laughs> it's amazing what you sign. <laughs> I've signed different things on different people. <laughs> <laughs> you probably signed some sunglasses and windbreakers. I had one time, I had one time a person came up and said, uh, could you, uh, could you uh, uh, tattoo me? Put your name on, on, in, in on my arm, just tattoo Bernie. And I went, I, I don't know about that, but then I thought about it and I'm, how often do you get an opportunity to uh, tattoo somebody? So I said, all right, I'll do it. So I put on the gloves and everything else, and I start, my hands started shaking and stuff like this, and I'm, <laughs> I'm writing, okay, burn in. He says, harder, ha push harder, harder. <laughs> and, and the smell came up, you know, that, that oh, wow. uh, yeah, yeah, the smell, and, and, I'm, and I'm shaking, and I'm, and I'm putting it down, and I, I finished, and I said, okay, 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 I did it, I did it, okay, look. And he looked, and he said, you, you misspelled Bernie. <laughs> You needed Andrew McCarthy to stick his hand up in and do it for you. I misspelled it, and I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I mean, how many times have I written Bernie? <laughs> and, and I said, oh, my God. I, 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 and he said, no, that's great. That's great. I can talk about it. He says, Bernie misspelled Bernie. And I, <laughs> Another story. Oh, my. My, 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 my gosh. My, my. Wow. That is, that, is inc that is incredible. I mean, of course, you know, you... you, you I, now I, I, well, let's go back. Let's go backwards first, because there's, there's, everybody knows Weekend at Bernie's, and, and I definitely want to talk about Weekend at Bernie's. But what, you know, you started what you got a degree in engineering or something like that, and you were doing local th theater. I was. Uh, I graduated from Kansas University as an industrial engineer, civil engineering and business, because in the Midwest you can't be an actor. I mean that's. You know, you have to be a doctor, a lawyer, or somebody important. Uh, but I'd been in amateur theater, so I had my own company and everything else, and uh, made that decision, and I practiced for six months as an engineer. And I said, well, I've got to try this. If I don't try it, I'm, I'm really not being, you know, loyal to myself. And so I got on a bus with $1,500 in my pocket, gave up my job, lady, friend, dog. My mother is waving at the bus with tears coming down her eyes. And here I go off to New York City to try to be an actor. And I think the wise thing that I learned, a man told me, he said, he said when you do this, it's not for life. In other words, when you make a decision like this, give it a time period, give it a year, give it three years, whatever it is, and then it's, you say, well, then I'll look and see, look back and say, okay, is this what I want to do? Want to be an actor? Maybe I want to be a writer now, maybe something else. Uh, but it turned out okay, and uh, I kept going, so I started in New York City uh, on Broadway and stuff like that and won a couple of awards. And... Uh, you know, went from there, and um, thank goodness I took the 
the opportunity to follow my dreams. And if I have to pass anything on, I said, I think that's what it is. You know, follow your dreams because you never know what's going to happen. What was your, what would you say your first like big role that you were excited about was? You know, people have asked me that question yeah. and, and I don't really have a favorite role as such because I'm so happy that I got a job and I'm on the set. <laughs> And but for real, and uh, and so I, I'm just happy to do the work. Um, so you know, I've, I've had the opportunity. One of the advantages I have is that you know I can do comedy, but I can also do serious stuff. So what happened was I could work twice as much as anybody else because I could do comedy and I could do serious, and so that that was a real you know, a big advantage I had, I think, in, in the craft of acting. Uh, is there a nutshell of the biggest difference between playing a serious character and playing a comedic role? No. And because I'm a lifetime member of the Actors Studio, I was fortunate enough to study with Lee Strasberg, who is the kind of the guru of acting coaches at the uh, Actors Studio. So I'm a lifetime member there. And uh, I think when you have a craft of anything, you have to study that craft. You can't just say, I'm going to do this. Uh, and I found out that comedy and, and, and serious uh, roles and stuff like this are really the same. It's just making something real. I've always said that acting is learning how not to act. In other words, if you, it, it, gee, if he just seems like he's there. He's see, real. Yeah, if, you see, if it seems like you're acting, you're doing it wrong, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Fan, that's amazing. Now, I, I know that, like, you know, you worked on a lot of episodic television, The Fall Guy, and a lot of shows that I, I, I remember loving as, as, as a youngster. I mean, these shows were like making a whole movie on, like, a breakneck schedule, right? I mean, for the most part. I mean, is there, is there a big difference between making a feature film and making a television show? Yeah. What, I think what the difference is is that you come on a set if you're a guest star. They've all been together for a long time. All of a sudden, you're a new boy in the neighborhood. And so there's, a, the, you know, the crew and everything else, all right, here's another actor, okay, yeah, let's just say your lines, get them out, get them out, move them on. Uh, but uh, I was very fortunate that, you know, I accepted this reality, but it, then they would watch dailies, which are what you filmed the day before, and all of a sudden they say, oh, my, okay, he knows what he's doing, he's okay, he's part of the gang, that's all right. And uh, so you're accepted, but it takes you a day to get accepted on, on, <laughs> on, your, on your situation. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, now, on, on Night Court, you, pay, you played kind of, if I remember correctly, sort of an irritating character, like a recurring thorn in Harry's side, uh, kind of, a, was he a reporter? Yes. Yeah. Uh, How many episodes of Night Court did you appear on? Maybe five or six, something like that. And I, and I hear they're doing a, General Cut is, is, is doing a pilot of a new one. I uh, said, yeah, are they, are they going to call you? I said, where the hell am I? Where, who, who, nobody called me. I mean, it's a short list. They got Richard Mull possibly, right? John Larroquette possibly. I think they should go after every character actor who's ever been on the show. I think they will. I think, I think they'll do the pilot, and then they'll come back to me. So we'll yeah, see. I'd love to see you on it because that I think that was probably one of the greatest comedy series of all time. Also, yeah. And what what is a what is a good comedy series? What is a good series? Any series? It really starts as we know. Like you know, I, I did some Three's Companies with uh, John Ritter. Ah, uh, and uh, it always starts at the top. In other words, obviously, uh, John is a it was a dear friend. He, he just left us a little too soon. But uh, it always starts from the top. And, uh, and he created that atmosphere for the actors, for the writers, and everything else. And so it became a class act. And uh, there was no showbiz involved. It was always like, let's do what we're trained to do. Let's do the craft and see how we can make it work. And uh, so that was always a, a, a pleasure. It, it's interesting that you mentioned Three's Company because... Three's Company kind of has a feeling of those, and I'm a little bit ignorant in this area, but there are those kind of like European plays where there's a lot of slamming doors and, you know, misunderstood conversations and, you know, 
and I feel like it's it's it, 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 Three's Company kind of had that essence of like one of those stage one of those stage plays where you've got like you know people misunderstanding under each other and slamming doors and and people running up and down the stairs and I feel like Weekend and Bernie's the original has a little bit of that which is its own version of Three's Company if you think about it. <laughs> people always ask me. Why did Weekend at Bernie's, why did these things work? And the reason is that it's what it's called situational comedy. In other words, the comedy comes out of real situations. Uh, it's not shtick, like, oh, yeah, yeah, blah, yeah. It's out of something that's real. And when you have that type of comedy, or, or um, it lasts forever. In other words, you can see Weekend at Bernie's ten times, and the tenth time is funnier than the first time. And that's because it's real. It comes out of situations that, that, uh, uh, that, that's not shtick. And so I think this is the success of comedy like that. I mean, uh, you really, you know, there's, it, watching that movie again, Weekend at Bernie's, it's interesting what a slow burn it is. To, slow burn. So there's a joke right there. What a slow burn it is because first we get to know you as a living character and you're not a nice guy. And... and to put it lightly, you're stealing, mo you're stealing money from the company. <laughs> and these two guys think they're doing you a favor by pointing this out, that this, all this money is getting stolen. And then, of course, you decide to rub them out because they know too much. But then, of course, the tables get turned and you get rubbed out. And so in the beginning, these, these guys are, are, are very sympathetic towards you because they're your new... You're their new friend at the company. And their boss. You're their boss, yeah. And then at the end when they realize that, that, that you didn't like those guys and you were going to get rid of them anyway, then I, there's a sort of a turn there where they are, uh, <laughs> they're not as gentle with you <laughs> anymore. Um, but, but both versions are f equally funny. You know, and, and there's actually, I feel like that movie has a really great structure because the whole situation at the beginning before you're even dead is very funny and the play between all of the characters. And then there's the situation where they're, they're, they're more protective of you. And then the third of the whole last act where you're hitting your head on, uh, 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 what are those called? Uh, b Bowies, buoys, right? <clears throat> Channel markers, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for saving this interview with and, channel and, and, markers. And you know, when you look at that movie again, the channel markers, of course, that noise, when they hit bong, oh. it, it makes you laugh. The noise makes you laugh. And so when there's a part in the, uh, the, the, the latter part of the movie where he's on the staircase and uh, the, the boys are saying, it's just Bernie. And they take my head and they bounce it on the, the stair rail. Well, I said, then put the same noise on the stair rail <laughs> as the buoy, because we know the buoy works. And so if you'll look at it again and you'll see that, 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 that this thing, that's, that's the buoy noise. You take what works. <laughs> it, you know, and the, 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 again, there, the, it's, you guys are the three stooges in that movie. Where there's, there, you really are playing off of each other, and even when you're not doing something, you're doing something. And it's interesting to to we never catch you helping them help you, but I always felt like you were helping them help you. Is that true? Yeah. Um, the, way, the way we, uh, the three of us uh, got pretty tight, obviously. And, uh, and so the idea is it says, how can we keep this fresh? How can we keep this alive and real? And so the whole idea was we were trying to break up each other on the set, <laughs> you know, when they came down. And, and, but what that did, it kept it, it, it kept it fresh. And like, it wasn't like, okay, let's do this thing. All of a sudden, somebody would do something, and we'd never know where that was coming from. <clears throat> I think one of the funniest stories from the movie was the first time that I saw Bernie dead on screen. In other words, we would watch the dailies the next day, and we just filmed the first time that Bernie was dead. And I looked at this thing and I said, I said, that's not funny. He's just dead. He's not funny dead. He's just dead. And I'm in my hotel room and I'm, it's late at night and I'm saying, Gad, what? 
How can I make him funny dead? It's, he's dead. It's not funny. <clears throat> and that's where the Bernie smirk came from. Because I'm at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning in front of a mirror trying to, well, what's funny? What can, and you go back to basic acting. You say, okay, just what's real? What's going on? You're trying to break up these guys. Well, how are you going to break them up? And so I'm looking at stuff in the mirror, and I'm looking my face around and stuff. And I said I knew I had to hold, I had to hold this for like, you know, two minutes when you're dead and stuff like that. Well, I found this, mm, mm, mm. this thing, and I, and I, I said, I, that's, I think that's funny. I think that's funny, Dad. Mm, 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 mm. And I'm looking in the mirror. Well, you don't know if it works. You don't know. <laughs> you don't, you don't know if it works until you see, till you do it in the, front of the old timers. The in smirk, other words, your crew. The smirk plus the sunglasses, because you get you get nothing from the eyes. It's all it's all in the right there. Yeah. Uh, as soon did, as, as soon oh, as oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No. As soon as we did it on set. As soon as I did it on set. And you have, if you can make the crew laugh, these old guys that have been around and just want the actor to say the lines, move on, because I got a di you know, dinner. Uh, and all of a sudden, I did this thing for the first time in front of the camera. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and they started laughing. And I said, ooh, okay. <laughs> got it. Now he's funny dead and not dead dead. And that was a big turn in the movie right there, big time. Now, did you guys have a lot of prep time as far as getting to know each other and learning all those moves together and having your shoelaces tied together? I mean, was there time before the picture started rolling to, to do that? We rehearsed it like a uh, stage play at the beginning. In New York City, we had a big uh, dance studio type of thing, and uh, we, we started saying, because I, call it, I thought, well, maybe it's just a one-trick pony, that it's not, you know, just, is it... Well, when we started experimenting with stuff, well, how would you shut, you know, how would you, well, let's tie the shoelaces and maybe we can walk and we do this. And how would he be on a board when he comes up on the thing? And we started doing all these different things and we started breaking up. And I, and I kind of looked at the guys and I said, ooh, we're liable to have something here. <laughs> this is getting funny. And so it was rehearsed like a stage play. And that's where the creativeness came, tying shoelaces, how we carried each other and stuff like that. Uh, one of the funny thing that when I when they offered me this part, they they said, uh, "Can you can you please read for this part uh, where he's you know alive at the beginning?" And I'd just been in a like a um, uh, I had a little um, a little motorcycle accident, and so I had like seven stitches in my head, and they shaved this part of my head. And I said, "I can't audition. I got a bald spot in my head. I can't." You're right for this part. I think you. I said, "I can't." And so. Um, a month goes by, my hair is growing out. They're in New York trying to, trying to now cast it in New York because I can't find anybody in LA. I get a call again and they said, can, can you please, Terry, I, I said, okay, I can come in because my hair, I can, okay. And so I go in there and, and I'm in front of the mirror and I'm shaving and stuff like this and I'm, because I hadn't shaved for a month. And I said, I think I'll just keep this mustache. Never had a mustache in my life. I don't know why. To this day, I think the mustache got the job. In other words, <laughs> for real, because wow. because I I don't know some subconscious image of me being between two guys and these young guys and that. The, I don't know. I don't know. But I kept the mustache, and I went in and and the, what do you need anything, Terry? I said, let me just put it on tape. We'll put it. So we put it on tape. They shipped it off to New York right away. I get a call, you got the job. You're, they cast this it, that's it. Well now, and they, when they come back into town, you can go meet them. I, I didn't want to meet them, because I had the job. And I was afraid that now if they saw me for real, they wouldn't want me. Might spoil it. <laughs> for real. <laughs> so I said, no, I, I don't want to meet anybody. I'll, I'll meet you on the set. <laughs> but, uh, to this day, I, I, I seriously think that mustache, you know, got the job. It's interesting because, you know, I mean, I guess these were, again, these were two young guys. This was the 80s. You know, my dad had a mustache. My boss had a mustache. You know, I would have been the same age as these, these gentlemen are. So, so I, I think that it is, it's interesting to think just from a dynamic of that. I think the mustache probably 
was the perfect thing to set that off. Uh, now, if he, okay, so you guys do this role together. Now, the, 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 the stupid thing to say is, oh, okay, well, you just play dead for the whole movie. But in watching the movie, this is an incredibly physically demanding role. And I keep thinking, if they just turned his head a little too fast, they'd break your neck. Or if they just pulled you the wrong way, they'd twist your ankle. I mean, I, I mean, just getting up and down the stairs in my house, I almost kill myself. I cannot imagine how many times you must have gotten hurt either accidentally or on purpose during this. I broke uh, three ribs during the filming of the thing. I had a vertebrae jammed in my neck that caused dizziness, violent dizziness and stuff like that, because I made the mistake of all fellow actors out there or people that uh, have bosses, the director would always say, okay, did we get, did we get it? Did we get the take? Yeah, we got it, okay. How's the actor? We were, we were always second class on this thing, you know, in other words. Uh, and finally I realized, I said, I'm getting hurt and I'm they're always saying, did you get the shot? Yeah, I got the shot. Is the actor okay? Why is he crying on this, down here? Why is, <clears throat> I finally realized I, uh, every, all of a sudden they were going to do a stunt where, okay, now you're on the wagon and your head's going to bounce against the thing like this. And I said, whoa, 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 wait, wait. I'm sorry, but I don't understand what you're saying. Could you show me? And because if, if you show me, then maybe I can do it. But I just don't understand what you're telling me. Well, all of a sudden, things got a little more safe on the set because I had the director do it. Well, you know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. I just don't know what you're talking about. I'm if you could show me, then I, then, I can, then I can tell you. And that's a true story. Well, you know, a good director should be willing to do anything he's going to ask somebody else to do, right? You'd think. Uh, now, is that why the dynamic of the second film is different? There, the, no, di that director's not back for that second film. It, was that part of that? We got a um, Sunday morning in Los Angeles. I get a phone call from the uh, producer, this Victor Gray. He says, Terry, come over to the house right now. Says, it's a Sunday morning. What the hell? He says, Terry, get over to my house, please, right now. And then Robert Klein is coming, too, with the writer. Okay, so I go over to his house, 10.30 in the morning or something. He says, everybody sit down, the three of us. Okay, uh, here's champagne. So what the hell, what are you talking about? We got the money for the second movie. And I said, whoa, whoa, are you kidding me? <coughs> Stick him up. <laughs> <laughs> Reach he, for the uh, sky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where do you, where, where you want to go, Terry? Where, 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 where do you, I said, I want to go someplace where I can take off my shoes, get in the water, and it's warm. That's how St. Thomas came about, for real. It was that Sunday morning in L.A. <coughs> saying, I want I want. So you warm, all got a vacation water. in the Virgin warm, Islands on top of it. Warm water. I want warm water. And uh, that's how the second movie came about, uh, which was a joy. Some place where the water was warm now. In that movie, you are, well, not to spoil it, I'm sure everyone who's here to see you has seen both movies a hundred times, but not, not to spoil it, but in the second movie, voodoo is kind of making you amble around a little bit. Every time music is played, you kind of move along. And so at some point, you just keep moving and you kind of go into the water and you go under the water and then you're at the bottom of the ocean walking around. And I'm watching these scenes and I'm going, now I know he's dead in the movie, but how does a living person not drown underwater doing these scenes? It started off, the first time you see Bernie moving and the idea, obviously when the music plays, he becomes alive through the voodoo thing. And I'm sitting on a toilet, and these two guys turning on the music and stuff like this, and I'm saying as an actor, you know, how, how, what, how, you know, how can I make this real again? How can I make this real and not sticky? And I said, well, music, where does music start from? Music always starts right here. And, and, I, and I realized, I said, well, okay, what if that's, you know, starts, and uh, th this, and I, I just, it, 
<laughs> but, sudden, and, but, it, but it was real. But it was real. You know, it, it, came out, it came out real. It wasn't shtick because it came from a core of music where I thought yeah, music yes, started. Right. And uh, you're just leading yourself around by your groin for the whole movie. And, but the, I think that's why it was, why it was a success, because it, because it was real. It wasn't shtick. It came from a, a it, real it, idea. And it is so fall down funny. Like, I mean, it's interesting because we talked about this a little bit beforehand, because the, the, the first film, you know, you, you don't like Bernie a whole lot. But by the second film, he's the most likable character in the movie. And so, like, he's almost the protagonist at this point. And whenever you're, I mean, I feel like, the, not to overstate it, but the movie comes alive when you're, when you just, only when you're present in that second movie, in my, in my opinion. And the biggest laughs come from, from you ambling around and people reacting to you. Um, and, 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 and what's not also nice about it is that it's a totally new joke. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's you puppeting yourself around versus two guys puppeting uh, uh, around. And you seem like you're being animated. You don't seem like you're moving yourself. You do seem like the music is moving you and you're just kind of a helpless puppet to this, this thing that's happened to you. And, 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 and that's an amazing, uh, that's an amazing bit of physical comedy. Thank you. Um, it was fun. Uh, you know, we all, all, all of us have bucket lists that we want in our life and stuff like this. And all of a sudden, I, I get a call from the Oakland A's baseball team. And they say, Terry, can, well, can, can, can we fly you out here and, and can you throw out the opening pitch? Well, I mean, that's a dream. A, a throw out an opening pitch for a major league baseball team? Well, I guess what happened with the Oakland A's, they were in the running that year. This was a couple of years ago, three years ago. And uh, somebody in the locker room all of a sudden just started going, hey, you know, do it. <laughs> and uh, everybody laughed, everybody laughed. And all of a sudden it came the next week, somebody hit a home run. And before going to the dugout, he did, did all of a sudden the seventh inning stretch. They were, do, you know, doing this thing. So they fly me out there. And I'm, I mean, I'm tickled to death. I'm like a little kid. Are you kidding me? Are you? I said, well, now how the hell am I going to throw out this opening? What am I going to do? <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> first of all, there were 35,000 people, and they all had these masks of Bernie on it. Oh, Same wow. Like so, so I'm looking at 35,000 people of me looking at me like this was wow. kind of you know, a little intimidating. And they said, what do you want to do? And I said, well, uh, uh, here, play this music, and then I'll go out on the mound. They said, what? I said, just play this music. And I had some blues type of thing like this. They said, all right, ladies and gentlemen, and a weekend at Bernie's thing. <clears throat> and so I go out on the mountain, and they start playing this music. And I literally laid down on the mound. And, and I, and I, they start, <laughs> they start, they, they started going like this, and I got this ball. And they go, and the music is playing like this, and I'm looking around like this, and I'm going, and I throw that ball, and and there were three of them: the catcher and the and the and the, uh, and the two um, uh, uh, captains of the team wanted to be in this thing. So I threw the ball, and I just ran at the at them, and just jumped on top of them like this. Well, it was a big success; everybody loved it, and Terry had a bucket list that. That's amazing, and I'm sure everyone was laughing their brains out. They were. Uh, that, what a what a what a what an amazing thing, and and it, it, it is it is incredible how enduring it is. And what's interesting too about Weekend at Bernie's watching it is that it's it's a very classic comedy, and you know you look at all the sex comedies of the '80s and stuff that were coming out. You think of things like you know Porky's and Bachelor Party, and and. Uh, and when you watch Bernie's, there's really not a lot, there's not much object, there's not even a drop of blood when you get shot in the chest. I mean, it's a pretty uh, antiseptic movie from, from uh, 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 an adult co content standpoint. You know what I mean? I feel, anyway. I, I, can, I can tell of a, an interesting story that I had with Paul Newman that I just would share with all of you. Uh, you don't have to be an actor, you can just be 
in life that we all are and our, our journey. <clears throat> but I, I was uh, fortunate enough to be in uh, uh, the first film that he directed called Rachel, Rachel. And I played an evangelist minister that talked in tongues. And it was my first big role and stuff like this. It was Paul Newman, for crying out loud. <clears throat> and uh, he liked to rehearse things as a play because he's a, a theater actor, came from the theater. <clears throat> and so we were rehearsing this one scene before we shot it. And I was with Joanne Woodward, and I was saving her as this evangelist. Oh, Lord! Listen to me here. I'm going to save this woman here. And so I literally had her face. Lord, we're talking to this woman. She's fighting me back and forth. We're going to have it. And we had, and, and I was holding her. And she kind of went, to, and we ended up like under the table because she went down and I went down and <coughs> still holding. Oh, Lord, we're saving this woman now. Here we hear me. And we had, and I'm like this. And most people would say, well, wait a minute, that's, that's nice, but you have to, you know, do it above the table. Because, I mean, you can't. Paul Newman was on his hands and knees under the table with the director of photography and saying, now, can we get this shot here? Is there any way we can get? And what I'm saying is, in life, don't be afraid to get under the table. And what I mean by that is that we all have ideas and stuff like this of how things should be. And, and all of a sudden, something happens in life that we don't plan on. And that's life, you know. Don't be afraid to get under the table. Let go. Let go, let go of your ideas or, or uh, how you're set in things. But if something happens in your life that is out of the norm and is not part of your journey... Don't be afraid to get under the table. Try it. And it was a great lesson for me, and I, I thank Mr. Newman for giving that. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. That's a good one. That's a nice bit of advice. I think we all can kind of go outside of our, out of our comfort zone. I mean, and, uh, you know, again, there's so, there's so many. I, we, we could go for 17 hours talking about all various films you're in. Quickly, I want to talk about... Friday the 13th, just briefly. You're Dr. Cruz in there. You're kind of a, what, sneaky psychiatrist guy, right? Uh, how would you define that character? <laughs> I guess I should let you explain the character. It was funny when, the, when, the, when, it was, when the, that, that film was offered to me, and I said, Friday the 13th, part seven? <laughs> well, and then I said, Terry, just read the script. Just read the script first, because the director really wants you. All right. Uh, so I'm reading the script, and I'm, and I'm saying, whoa, wait, wait. He's a bad guy. I thought only Jason was a bad guy. You know, I said, Wait, I, I can play a bad guy? And with, I said, yeah, this is interesting. So I accepted the part and, and the idea that, uh, you know, it was bad news cruise. That's what it turned out. And, uh, and, and we just did, and, and there's another one called uh, Blood. There's another Friday the 13th, part seven. And, uh, and, they, and they call me in, and, they, and I'm, I start the movie off as a flashback of Dr. Cruz and the gal and me making her crazy in the insane asylum. And it ends up, at, and all of a sudden, boom, the movie starts. And so that's coming out, I think, uh, the end of November. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's coming, yeah. coming out yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that should be fun. I'll what, tell you, I'll tell you, I'll do tell we you. know the title of that? Yeah. It's something. a Friday the Thirteenth. No, yeah, blood, blood, blood bath. Blood, oh, blood. Okay, something, something, all right. We'll find. We'll we'll find yeah, it. Yeah, we'll find it. I'll tell. I'll tell one more story that I, that I, I love to share with Carol Burnett. Okay. Um. To work with Carol Burnett, obviously, is as an actor. I mean, uh, talk about a bucket list. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I and so we started this series with her, and. I had a scene with her, and I said, Carol, um, I don't know, maybe, she, maybe she, I should have an accent, you know, when we do this, or, um, you know, and, and um, you know, my pants, maybe I can have the, the, the stand up. All right, now do it. What? <laughs> do it. Terry, do it. Do it. Do it. In other words, do something. Do, talk, this, do something. 
and stop this chatter from going on in your head. Do, because that will create some movement, that will do something. In other words, get out of your head, stop, stop the head, do it. And I think that's another lesson of life that, that we all, all should do. In other words, we can all think things, you know, I should, maybe I should be a, and I could do this, and maybe I could go to school for, do it. <coughs> Just try something. Reach physically, do something, and have confidence that something will happen. Uh, I guess all those stories are, 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 are kind of what I learned from Lee Strasberg. Uh, in other words, that you, you have to get out of your, out of your head. You have, to, you have to get out of your head. You have to start something inside of you to really start enjoying life. Wow. Uh, we're, we're learning a lot in this, oh, this panel. Now, you are a teacher, aren't you? I mean, it, it seems like that's a natural part of your personality. I did. I, I, uh, I had a school for two years in Austin, Texas. I was doing a series in Nashville, and I didn't know what to do with my time in Austin because I was with a lady friend. Uh, and we wanted to be together. And uh, so here I'm in an Austin. What the hell am I supposed to do? I'm, I'm flying to Nashville for these four days, but how about these other three days? And, and so I started a school called the Actors Arena. And uh, it was sold out for two years. And, and, uh, and, I, and I taught young people, too. Uh, young, young students, which I love. Young people, uh, adults, yes, they're fun and stuff like this, and you can, you know, whack them and stuff. But when you have young people, you want to be able to touch them so lightly, creatively, because you never want to damage this incredible <coughs> view of life they have. They're not ruined by the world oh. of adults yet. Yeah, yeah. And so that was, a, that was a, a, a big thing in my life. I really enjoyed passing on the knowledge of the craft to not only adults, but young people coming up and, 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 and freeing them in thinking differently. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, I'm going to take a couple of questions from the audience, if that's okay. I'm, I'm loving this interview. Um, any questions? For, I should have asked everyone to prepare some questions at the start. I usually do that. But uh, any questions for Terry Kaiser from the audience? Yes, you, sir. I, actually, hold on. Use, use the mic. Oh, he's got he's on it. I was going to fill Donahue and run out there. but I'm just wondering if you had any interesting stories from the Playboy shoot that you did. Say it louder. Say it louder, can you? I'm just wondering if you had any interesting stories from the Playboy shoot that you did. The Playboy interesting, sh interesting stories from the Playboy shoot. Yeah, it was very interesting. <laughs> yeah, we're on the set in St. Thomas, and they said, Terry, we, Playboy wants to do a seven-page spread with you. They're flying out seven uh, Playmates of the month. Uh, okay, fine. Well, what am I supposed to do? And, and, they're gonna, and, and so, so we're going to shoot them, uh, you know, as Playmates and uh, with Bernie. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 <clears throat> they come out, lovely ladies, beautiful ladies, but you know, with no clothes. <clears throat> and I said, "I, ladies, I, I, you know, I'm, I am a man, and um, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to turn my head and be, you know, shy with this thing. I'm gonna look, yeah. and we'll go from there." And they were very shy. And okay, yeah, we can do the thing. Well, at the end of the shoot and stuff like that. that and so it was, it, it, was, it was fun. It was fun to do that and uh, a, a fascinating experience for a gentleman. So Bernie always gets the ladies. That's what I'm learning. Uh, I, I think he really got more action than, than either uh, 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 Jonathan Silverman or Andrew McCarthy in, those, in both of those films. Uh, <laughs> thinking on it now. Any other questions from the audience? Oh, one back there. Hi. Um, what? Test, test, test. One scene in uh, Weekend at Bernie's where uh, Andrew McCarthy and uh, making out in the uh, on the beach wash up how did they do that 
washed up on the beach. Washed up on when you were getting washed up on the Oh my, they, were, they do yeah. that. Yeah. That was funny. Because uh, the, 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 the director on this thing, Ted, Ted Kotcheff, you know, he was a maniac anyway. Uh, a maniac? Maniac. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, he was a maniac, a, a creative comic maniac. And uh, what, they, what they did was they, they had boards, and so I was going to float in on a board, and then when the tide went out, the board, you know, went back like this. I said, well, how are we going to do this thing? Well, they ended up getting... I think there were 11 people on the board, 11 people, and, and they started on shallow water, and then the last one, of course, moving this board to shore, <clears throat> and they were trying to do this thing, and the waves, all of a sudden the tide came out, and the waves, and, 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 and this director all of a sudden said, can somebody stop the God thing? I mean, just do the th bring it in. Never mind about the about the about you know the 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 the, the surf, surf stuff and and, the, and so we're trying our best sir we're trying our best but so they had like 10 11 12 people on a board on this long board <clears throat> that went out to the sea and were literally pushing me lying on this board <clears throat> into the sand and then out again like this and the people at the end were drowning i mean it was over their head trying to hold this thing up like this and then he's screaming you know, stop the tide. Tell the tide to stop. <laughs> so, yeah, it was very funny, and but uh, it, it was worth it because it, it was a laugh in the movie. Yeah. Uh, now, did any, I mean, you said you got hurt. Were stuntmen and stuff, I'm assuming there were stuntmen as well and things in this movie. There were, there were uh, <clears throat> Bernie had to do a lot of the stuff himself because they wanted the face. But if we could get away with something else, and uh, the, where, where, where he's hitting the uh, waves before the buoy thing, uh, Bernie goes up, that's where I cracked three ribs, going up on that boat and hitting the back of the boat instead of the seat. But, and, and then the stunt guy did the rollover into the water, but that knocked him out <clears throat> because the boat was going 40 miles an hour, and so when he fell off the boat, that knocked him out. There was another scene, another stunt guy tried on the balcony where all of a sudden Bernie falls over the balcony <clears throat> into the sand. And what happens, people found out that like if you're shot, if I get shot and I get shot, I go, oh, well, look at I'm, I'm bracing myself right here before I fall. And so I'm, I'm doing, but when you're dead, it's this, there's no, no holding on. So from the balcony, he went down, he couldn't, if you were, he couldn't push himself out, which you would usually do. So he went down like this, 27 stitches in his face. He did the 27 thing. stitches in his face yeah. going down the yeah. side of yeah. the yeah. thing. Wow. Yeah. Falling yeah. off the, uh, I guess, the house, right? Yeah. Or the beach yeah. house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. That is, so that it, is. It, it, was, it, was, it was accomplishing something that's never been done before. Yeah. Nobody had been dead and fall. Yeah. When you're dead, you get shot, or you, but you can push yourself. You can. Yeah. Sure, you got those. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All those cowboy movies where those guys literally are throwing themselves off into a cushion. But if you just dead fall straight down, yeah, you're, you're not bracing yourself. You're not protecting your limbs. You're not protecting your face. Wow, that's something to think about. That is, that is amazing. Well, I, I, uh, that is, we're learning a lot <laughs> about the danger of comedy. Um, yeah. <laughs> Very yes, for sure. How are we on time? Okay, <laughs> we are out of time. <laughs> I had a most wonderful time talking with you. Thank you so much, Terry, for sharing uh, some of your career and your life with us. Thank and, and you all. Thank you all. This we want to see you. In a, we want to see you in another two hundred movies. Okay, you got to promise us. Hi, this is Gary Chalk of Optimus Prime. Please stay tuned to Fandom Spotlight. You can watch it online at any time.